Hi, welcome to product review by Watt Hour. In this video, we are going to do the review and test of this XYS3580 80 watt 5 ampere 36 volt back boost converter with color LCD screen with tons of features. I'm going to explain the module and then the major components. Have a look at them under the digital magnifier and we'll show you the data sheet. I'm going to show you the minimum and maximum voltage that this can handle. I'm going to show you how to set the voltage and current. Then I'm going to test the accuracy of reading of voltage and current. And then we are going to test it with different input and output voltages and currents and see how much it can handle. I'm going to show you also how to charge a battery and demonstrate also under voltage protection and many other features of this. The short circuit protection, the output REPL. You can get the resources, data sheet and related files by visiting our website whatour.ca Recently uh, this module was available in the market XYS3580 this has a rated current of 5 ampere at the output and the maximum input current is 7 ampere one good thing about this one is that it has a fan cooling fan for the heatsink so it constantly cools it down and it's very great advantage plus we have color screen where we can see the voltage and also we can see the output current the power and then the voltages that you set and then the temperature of the device uh, in this demonstration I'm going to show you also the input voltage and current so you can see it but if I scroll on the other screen also it shows the input voltage in here as well this device also shows the minimum the fluctuation of the voltage and current on the screen and then you have 10 presets for different purposes m1 and m m0 to m9 for each you can set for each you can set the minimum input voltage maximum output voltage current power energy time temperature a lot of other uh, parameters that you can set so for example you can set this to run for one hour and turn off it can do it for you and and for different application you can have different uh, presets for example here i can go to preset number two three or four and in each for example this is set now to be off what it means is that when you connect the power initially it will be off but also you can set it to be on we are going to test all the feature of this module and explain it so what is a boost converter Boost converter is a power electronic module that gets the input voltage and multiplies it by a factor or increases it. So this factor is greater than 1. Whatever voltage we have will appear at the output. For example, if Vn is 5 volts and x factor for this is 3, then it will be Vn is 5 times 3. We will get an output of 15 volts so this is called boost converter step down converter and also called back converter is a module that multiplies by a factor which is less than one so we receive an input voltage it goes through this uh, power electronic module and we have an output voltage for example vn if we have 24 volts to this module fed in and x is 0.5 or it divided by 2 so we have 24 vn is 24 and x is 0.5 we'll get 12 volts at the output and a back boost converter is a combination of back and boost so you can get both uh, features on the same module i purchased this from this store but it's available on many other stores that you want. I will also provide you a link on Amazon. I bought it for $23.55 Canadian with shipping 166, but you can get it faster with paying more for the shipping. And this was the package that I received. And this is the module, how it is shipped. There is no manual or anything in it with this. But one thing was that at least they have a sticker here and there is no model or anything on the module. It's amazing. Why, was it so hard to just put a model number here? I don't know. Now let me explain the module. 
We have one on off and then we have a rotary encoder which you can also press. So this is a push button as well and a rotary encoder. And here we have a input, the input plus, input minus. So the positive and negative will be connected here and this is the output. You, we can use flat screwdriver. And here, that's very interesting. Beside the heatsink, we have a fan here to cool it down, which we are going to test and see how it behaves. Voltage resolution is 10 millivolts. The current is one milliampere, 10 million ampere hour and 10 million watt hours. And the time that it can calculate or be set is up to 1000 hours. Now let's open it. Now this is made with two layers. So the first one goes very easily. You just pull it. And as you can see, eight pin connectors here at this spot. And the main MOSFET is here, 25 milliohm resistor that is measuring the current via this with this boost converter in here, which I'm going to show you one by one digital magnifying microscope. We have another inductor here. But to remove this panel, we have to remove this rotary encoder from here a little and this will help and pull this a little and from here so the cover and here is the actual module with rotary encoder. These are the support pieces. Let's have a look at these two chips here. And this is LM358. This one is also LM358. Here is data sheet for LM358. This is a single supply dual operational amplifier or op amp. And the package that is used is this one. Now let's have a look at this main MOSFET, N06. And here's the data sheet for 50N06N. This is a 52.4 ampere, 60 volts, in-channel MOSFET. It's in-channel QFET MOSFET. The drain source resistance is 21 milliohm when it is turned on at 10 volts. Let's have a look at this chip at this corner. And that is XL1509. Here's a data sheet for XL1509. This is from Excel Semiconductor. 2 ampere, 150 kilohertz, 40 volts back DC to DC converter. Let's have a look at this three pin semiconductor. That is D82. And here is a data sheet for D. 82. This is NPN silicon transistor. And let's have a look at this diode. That is SS34. And here is a data sheet for SS34. This is a short key barrier rectifier. Uh, let's have a look at the main chip here, the microcontroller. This is the 32F100 from ST Semiconductor. Here is the data sheet for this. This is a 32-bit microcontroller, which has between 16 to 128 kilobyte of memory. We have also some uh, other components here, which I'm not going to go through those. I will provide you the, I will provide the list in the resources page for this module. And here we can put it back. Now let me show you the settings. If I'm powering it up, connecting the power, and this is how it boots up. And this is the, the last screen that I was, so it is displayed in here. And with, the, with this rotary encoder, we can move from one screen to the other one. First I'm going to go to the screen, then I'm going to explain it. So when we go 
it moves like that and it comes back so we have five screens on this screen we see the output voltage output current and output power so this is the product of these two when you multiply it you will get in here it shows the output set voltage whatever you set because currently it is off and also it shows the current that will be displayed so if i turn it on it shows that five volts that we have now the five volts is set at the output and here it shows also continuously the temperature in degrees celsius and it shows that we are in constant voltage mode now in this screen in order to set the voltage we just press it once you will see the voltage is highlighted now we can go between voltage and current like that so if i rotate it it continuously goes between voltage and current and now if you want to change the voltage press it once again and it shows at the 10 millivolts if i press it again it goes to 100 millivolts if i press it again it goes to the volt value the actual and then i can change it let's say 8 amp volts and now to to set the current just press it the voltage will be selected come to the current and then just press it once so now in here we can set set one millivolt milliampere as you can see we can set one milli ampere the maximum is 5.1 based on the profile that we set this is profile m0 and in, and in order to set the current we just press it once it will come to the voltage or current and then from here i can go to 10 milliampere 100 milliampere and change it and we can set because the values are very small you cannot go to the uh, value and then press it and this way you can press again and exit so let's go to the next screen this is amount of current or capacity of the battery have been drained or used and this is amount of energy that have been consumed since this time two minutes and five seconds that you see if we power this off you will see i powered it off and let me power it up you see that it is reset it so it is not keeping the track of the value when you power it off and here it shows the input voltage so this is very nice but i wish it was on the first screen but they put it in here and output is also shown here if you press this knob the highlight goes here you can go to the next the watt hour and you can go to the time it rotates back and if you want to reset it just press it it will be resetted and go to the next one just press it it will be resetted and i think this is not a good design in this case it should have been such that you press and hold it for three seconds then it should be reset but you can go to the next one on this screen we can set the brightness when i press this it comes to the first one and then you can do that's five more bright less bright and we can make it dimmer and if i press it again it goes to the next line this when it is zero the screen will never dim but if you set it at one you will see this icon here and one means after one minute it will turn off two minutes three up to nine minutes as you can see the screen is turned off to wake it up either press this or just rotate or press this knob and it will wake up from here you can set uh, the temperature in Fahrenheit let's exit and show you now the temperature is changed to Fahrenheit here a drift if there is some drift or incorrect reading you can subtract or add to fix that reading and the next line will select the background of the title as you can see it goes to all these colors and if i go to the next one press it and then here we can select the actual text or icon that is showing on that background a few seconds again it will exit or press it for longer than four seconds and this will exit from this screen 
so you can go back. On the screen we can set the memory preset. This is now memory preset 0 and here it says M0 and if I press it it comes here. From here you can just scroll to any of the lines and if I press it again it moves to the value that you can change because this one now has two value. If I press it again now memory 0, memory 1, 2, 3, 4 and for each we can ha set all these values. Let me go back to 0 and here and here when you set it on or off when the device powers up it will turn on. If you set it off it will not turn on until you press the push button. And the next one is the voltage, the default voltage. When it's turned on, this voltage will be connected or the, when the device is turned on. And you can set the value by pressing it. The same way you can go to the next line. That's the default current. That is the under voltage protection. That's the minimum voltage that this device will allow. And, and this is the maximum voltage that will allow you and this is the maximum current. Let's say you want to set this to never go above 25, a little higher. Let's say I set it to 26. As soon as it, uh, it detects it, you will see that it goes over voltage protection is turned on. And this is over current protection, maximum current that you can allow because you can change it. That current was the default current. This is the maximum current. And then the over power protection, this is the amount of power that will allow you can control it based on that. And, and this is over temperature protection. So if the device heat up uh, up to this temperature, then the device will shut off if you set it. So the amount of hour, if you want the device to turn off, when you uh, so you can set it to be turned off at 1000 hours, up to 1000 hours and then minutes as well. So we set that. Here you can send amount of capacity of the battery to be drained up to 100 ampere hour. You can monitor and turn it off. If it reaches that capacity, this is the watt hour amount of energy you want to monitor. So you can set all of these for each for M0, M1, M2 up to M9. So we have 10 memory presets and whatever you select, it will be displayed here. And depending on your application, you can rotate the format of the display. And if I press the power button for about five seconds, it rotates 90 degrees to the left. So you can install it something like this on a panel. And if I press it again and hold it for five seconds, it rotates again minus 90 degrees to this side, to this side, and rotates back. Now let's, let's see the minimum and maximum voltage. And as you can see, input voltage is 9 volts, output is now 15. Input current is strange, now it's 110 milliampere because of the boost conversion it wastes some energy now let me change the voltage i press this once and then twice and then three four times so it goes here 16 17 18 19 20 let me go with the maximum so i'm just rotating it 36.5 and as you can see the current increase even though there is no load but it shows here 0 0.01 it shows now 11 milliampere even though there is no load that's the maximum voltage that we can get and this is also can be set through the settings now let me go with the minimum so i press this again until it comes here i'm just reducing it very quick so we don't waste time so it goes up to as you can see 0 0.6 volts so minimum is 0 0.6 and maximum input voltage regardless because it's back boost converter at 9 we can get higher and lower. Now let me show you the accuracy of voltage reading. As you can see the output is shown here 
0.6 volts and I trust this device the most 0.587 so that's uh, that's acceptable around 20 millivolts deviation here and let's let's go 15 volts so I've set it at to 15 at 15.6 here and it is very accurate 15.6 let's go with maximum voltage and it shows 36.4 as you can see 36.45 so acceptable it's uh, very decent and also now let's put one ampere load And as you can see, it shows one ampere, 1.009. And here we are reading one ampere. So around nine milliampere deviation, it shows extra or seven milliampere. And here when the fan is turned on, uh, input current is 160 milliampere. Now if I go five ampere at 20 volts, you will see it shows 105 and then turns off. So overcurrent protection will work. Now you see two lights, it's off and also over power protection. So if I press it, one of them will disappear. Press again. Now let me demonstrate the short circuit protection. These are the two outputs and we have the voltage 4.2. Let's sh short circuit it. And as you can see, it doesn't allow more than two ampere and keeps it because it is set to two ampere and that's the input current protection so you should not worry now let me demonstrate under voltage protection for this module let's say you uh, you have the output of 15 volts and input is from a three cell uh, three of this lithium battery and the output is at the moment for example 11.2 and if this consumes energy from the battery if the voltage drops below certain value for each cell the battery will get damaged permanently so to protect the battery we use the under voltage protection and each lithium battery has certain value that you can protect it for example for some lithium battery it will be 2.6 volts so if it is 2.6 times 3 so it will be 7.8 volts, the lowest voltage for the lithium battery. Let's set the under voltage protection for 7.8. And here I'm pressing it. And let's go down. So that is the low voltage protection, LVP. Press it and press again. 7.8. and press this to exit now the input voltage is 11.2 let me reduce it slowly and see what happens it should disconnect the output so I'm going now 10 and now I'm reducing it 9 8 7.6 as you can see LVP low voltage protection kicked in and disconnected the output so your batteries will not get damaged now let me show you how we can charge a lithium battery or any other battery you need two parameters for the battery first is the voltage and the other one is the amount of current that you're going to charge for the lithium battery the maximum voltage that this can get for charge and before getting damaged is 4.2 volts so we have to know that one and then amount of current that you're charging the capacity for this model is 3800 milliampere hour and if you charge it at 1c which is a lot you can go with 3.8 ampere or 3800 milliampere and within one hour it will be fully charged but uh, let me set it at 
2 ampere and see how we can charge this first we have to set our voltage I'm pressing this uh, the rotary encoder and then changing this to 4.2 so now we will see 4.2 is here and then we have to we have to set also our current set the current press it and rotate it on the current and then uh, go and then go to the digit that you want to the decimal point and, and I'm, I'm making it 2 ampere so now it is set to 2 ampere and here are the terminals so negative will be connected to the negative and as soon as I connect this so it will keep the current below 2 ampere and as a result you will see CC here constant current and the voltage will be dropped in order to keep the current constant so let's connect this and as you can see the current is 2 ampere uh, but the voltage have been dropped because uh, with 2 ampere the voltage should be lowered so constant current is now working and keeping the current at 2 ampere and that's the result of the voltage so this is the input current now and this is now being charged at 2 ampere hour and as the battery is filled up the voltage will increase when it reaches 4.2 volts then the current will be and as the battery is filled up the voltage will increase when it reaches 4.2 volts then the current will be zero let me change the input voltage so we'll see what is the current with the input the output is does not matter so I increase the voltage to 23 volts as you can see that's the input current or I can reduce it but this is very stable at the output so now almost I'm, I'm 8 volts at the input and input current has now already been increased but the output is very stable as you can see the voltage has increased because this battery is not empty so we need a little charge to fill it up now as this voltage increases gets closer to 4.2 it will shut off this current for us and makes it zero fan is running continuously working the fan makes it very stable it's constantly cooling it down as you can see the temperature is 44.6 degrees celsius As you can see constant current is turning off because the voltage is below 2 ampere when it goes below 2 ampere then we don't need constant current so and here is the output ripple All output is 12 volts 5 ampere this is the boost converter ripple the output ripple is 62.4 millivolts now let's go with the back converter ripple and here is the ripple it is 58.4 millivolts so now I've connected my power supply coming through this we can read the current and we can see the voltage and here this is now connected to my electronic load where we can set any current there here is my electronic load let's now start the test input voltage is 15 volts and let's go with the maximum voltage of uh, 35 volts here as you can see input current is 5.6 5.58 and here at 2 ampere output we are getting 35 about 35 volts this is the power if I go on this screen 16 uh, milliampere hour and then 0 0.6 watt hour and this is the input voltage the time so we can see pretty good statistics but let's go on this screen because it's large let me increase the current to 3 ampere 
and as you can see it was shut down so it did not allow it and on the screen it says over power protection and the device is off the temperature shows here 62 degrees and here as you can see and the fan is already running output current is 2.1 and here is the input I'm increasing it 2.2 and that's the input current and keep in mind that input current cannot exceed 7 ampere so that's another limitation we have to watch if I increase a little so we can go 6 now 2.3 and it was shut off so let me turn it off turn it on again at 35 volts we can get 2.2 ampere and input is 6, 6 ampere output is 2.2 at 15 volts we can get 35 volts and here is the efficiency and now input is 15 volts output is 24 volts let's go with 2 ampere let me increase it to 3 ampere and as you can see the input current is 5 let me go with 4 so it says constant current and it did not allow let's change our constant current setting So it says 3.2 and it, it, it is not allowing. Let's change that. I've set the, the current to 5 ampere, that's the output current. Now let me turn it on with 4 ampere. And as you can see, turned it off. Now I turned it on at 3 ampere. I just realized that I was blocking the path for this. So when I was putting it, it was uh, being blocked. So 24 volts 3. We cannot get 4 ampere. And here, with input is 5.7. And here is the efficiency. And now we are going step down from 15. We are going down conversion, 12 volts. Let's go with 3 ampere. input is now 3 ampere almost let's go with 4 so constant voltage and current is good by the way the fan is running continuously Four point one, I'm increasing the current. Four point two, four point three, and that's the input current also. Four point four. Four point five. Four point six, and that's the input current. 4.7 4 4.8 4.9 that's 60 watts 59.07 watts and if I go here 
that's five I can increase it to 5.2 5.1 and exit so I'm increasing it to 5 let's see now it's 60 watt is being produced by this from 15 to 12 volts and here is the input current And here is the efficiency. Now input is 15 volts, output is 5 volts. Let's go with 3 ampere. 15 watts. Raise it to 4. Let's go to 5. So 5 ampere now. That's the input current. And here is the efficiency. I've set the output voltage to 3.3 .3 volts. Let's go with 5 ampere. 1.6 ampere at the input and we are getting 5 ampere. The temperature is normal, 51 degrees Celsius. And here is the efficiency. Let's have a look from this side. As you can see, 44 degrees Celsius. So the module is running very cool. Now input voltage is 7 volts and output is 35. 0.5 ampere is set. So here is the input current as you can see. Let me re increase it slowly. So 0.6 and then that's a current 0.7 increased the input so 0.8 it's now 5 ampere and it jumped significantly so with 35 volts you can get only 0.8 ampere at the output and this is the input current and here is the efficiency now input is 7 volts, output is 24 volts. Let's go with 1 ampere. And this is now output is 1 ampere. As you can see the input current is 4 ampere. Let me increase it slowly. 1 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3. 1 so 1.4 is maximum because as soon as it reaches 7 it will turn off so let's go 1.5 5.8 so we can get with 7 volts we can get 24 at 1.5 ampere input current is 6.86 and here is the efficiency input voltage is 7 volts output is now 15 volts let's go with 1.3 ampere as you can see 1.5 let me increase it 1.6 1.7 1.8 1.9 1 and at 2 ampere we are getting 5.6 at the input so 2 ampere 6.2 as a 2.2 2.3 so almost 7 ampere 2.4 so if you want to get from 7 volts 15 2.4 the input is 7 ampere and here is the efficiency now input is 7 volts output is 12 volts let's go with 3 ampere already input is 7.1 so let's go with 2.5 so to be safe you can get 2.5 ampere at 12 volts input current is 5.714 and here is the efficiency input is 7 output is 5 volts let's go with 3 ampere output and input current is almost the same so you see there is some loss here that's the loss 7 times 3 21 that's 21 watt and this is 5 times 3 15 watt 
2 watts is the difference and here is the efficiency input is 7 volts output is 3.3 volts let's go with 3 ampere as you can see we have enough room so let's go with 4 ampere 5 ampere maximum current that we can get is 5 ampere So input current now this is the limit we cannot go beyond this 5 and input is 3.78 ampere and here is the efficiency and here is the conclusion this module the XY3580 is excellent module because of the fan that it has it is very reliable in terms of uh, handling the current and power that it delivers the reading of the voltages and currents are uh, pretty accurate acceptable the temperature display the value that it displays the parameters that it displays are very nice and also uh, because it has a lot of presets it will be great and also you can send or customize the values of the screen as well i have no affiliation with them definitely i recommend this module if you are if you want to use it for three to five ampere i presented the tests with different voltages and currents so it's up to you to use it either as a back boost or back boost converter definitely this is a good module thank you for watching a video from what hour if you learned something and found this useful please thumb up as this will help my video in the search algorithm of youtube if you have comment or question please post it at the comment section below i try to answer and reply and don't forget to subscribe so you get updates of my upcoming videos let's go four ampere now with four ampere at the output we get 2.14 ampere at the input and let's have a look at the thermal image and at this point 2.14 